One of the biggest reasons I continue to buy Nintendo products despite the company's many shortcomings is that the games they make are filled with charm. Over the past 30 years, Nintendo has created some of the most beloved experiences in gaming. They've crafted more memorable characters and worlds than any other video game company, and they've done it with a consistent level of polish in regard to gameplay and presentation. However, the most impressive thing about Nintendo's charm is their ability to come up with ideas that people don't really want and then turn them into compelling games that fans can't help but fall in love with. Things that look awful on paper don't scare Nintendo, they inspire them. In my opinion, the best examples of Nintendo pulling this sort of thing off can primarily be found on the GameCube, which instead of following the trends of its competitors, doubled down on titles that were uniquely Nintendo. Its catalog is filled with games that fans never asked for, but grew to love anyway. They made strange but fun spin-offs like Kirby Air Ride. They reworked Zelda and Mario, redefining what both of those series could be. They even launched the console with a new franchise starring Luigi as a ghost hunter instead of one of their tried and trusted series. And they made an RTS action game, which by all means should be a nightmare for a console title, but by most accounts, it's not. Look, most of you know how the show works by now, so let me just say, shh, I've never played Pikmin. Pikmin is a series that I kind of actively avoided. When the first two titles released, I was in the keep me away from kids games phase, and even though it may not have deserved to be, Pikmin fell into that category. But now, some of my favorite pieces of media are ones that have the ability to appeal to both kids and adults in meaningful ways, and Pikmin certainly does that. It strikes a solid balance between silliness and seriousness. The world is lush and colorful and filled with Pikmin who are cute and expressive, but a threatening tension hangs over it all due to the main character after Captain Almar being stranded and only having 30 days to repair his ship before running out of life support. It had me on edge in the best way possible. Funny moments like watching the Pikmin trip or get distracted are offset by terrifying ones, like having a Bulbor swallow 10 Pikmin at once. It's adorably disturbing, and this mood is highlighted through the musings of Captain Olimar. One of the biggest reasons I find Olimar interesting stems from how fundamentally different he is compared to Nintendo's other major icons. Nintendo is kind of famous for building characters who really only convey information about their personality through their appearance and actions. More often than not, these characters never talk, but Olimar's most charming and intriguing feature is his voice. The observations and quips he makes when finding a ship component or writing a voyage log range from being funny to helpful to strangely poignant, and I think that might be part of why he never caught on the way that characters like Link or Kirby or Mario did. He's too deep to understand in a glance. Without his internal dialogue describing his hardships and the life he's trying to get back to, he doesn't appear to be all that interested of a character, which means he can't be quickly sold to an audience. Although it's only a small part of the game, seeing his thoughts about the Pikmin, his family, and life on a new planet created a greater sense of importance to complete in the mission, and it made Olimar go from being a character I didn't care about at all to one of my favorites. The Pikmin themselves are also very endearing. It's hard not to feel guilty or panicked when leading them into dangerous places. Overall, I felt a strong connection to the primary cast, which practically forced me to become invested. Pikmin's gameplay centers around growth and retrieval. Captain Olimar leads the Pikmin around the planet and throws them at things to get them to do one of their two major functions, carry stuff or beat the shit out of stuff. There's a pretty wide range of things they can beat the shit out of, whether it be walls that open pathways to new areas or giant bugs whose corpses can be brought back to base to create more Pikmin. On a whole, the Pikmin are pretty limited in what they can do and this works in the game's favor. If they had too many functions, there would most likely need to be some sort of bulky menu which would take away from how smoothly the game plays. Instead of given a single type of Pikmin a lot of different things to do, Nintendo opted to create various types of Pikmin with different passive abilities. This works great because it allows for streamlined gameplay while still providing a multitude of options for how to approach a task. Selecting the optimal composition of Pikmin for any given excursion can be the difference between retrieving more than one ship part in a day or dying in a fiery mess. As more ship parts are found, more of the world opens up to be explored, and overall the pacing of this is pretty solid. I never felt like I was stuck in one spot for too long, but opening new areas still felt deserved. There are five different zones, but only three have any real bulk to them, which is a little light on the level variety side of things. It would have been nice to have one or two more places with substance to explore. The three main areas are different enough from each other, but this kind of comes at the cost of underutilizing a couple features. For example, a few enemies are only encountered once, which is a 
shame because some of them have really interesting abilities that would have been cool to see in other situations. For me, the crux of Pikmin's experience comes from the limited amount of time given to accomplish the various tasks the game sets out. There are 30 days to collect as many ship parts as possible, and each day lasts about 15 minutes. Achieving this goal isn't that difficult, but having the countdowns in place adds a ton of weight to each day. If Olimar runs out of health or Pikmin, he must return to his ship and miss out on the rest of the day, which adds that much more pressure to collect more parts the next day. What I like about this is that it punishes failure in a way that isn't entirely defeating, but still puts players in a bad spot, making every accomplishment that much sweeter. Getting multiple groups of Pikmin to do as many different tasks as possible at the same time is paramount to completing the mission quickly. With that said, there is a lot of buffer room for players who never quite figure out how to manage their time well, which opens up the title to either be a casual experience or a speedrunning challenge. No matter how it's approached, Pikmin manages to be very chill and calming to play while still having high stakes, which I'm not really sure how it pulls off, but it does. In the grand scheme of things, Pikmin does a pretty good job of dealing with the limitations of being an RTS-like game on console, but throughout my time with it, I couldn't help but think that it would play better on a keyboard. When away from the base, there isn't a reliable way to pick out a specific number of Pikmin to form a group. They can be selected in a large number with Olimar's whistle, or in a smaller one by running into them when they're deselected, but neither are precise. This made it so I accidentally grabbed Pikmin that I didn't need, forcing me to deselect and try again. This is a pretty small annoyance, but when it happens over and over, it gets tired. Hiring. Also, while the developers made a smart decision by primarily giving the Pikmin passive abilities, there are still a few active ones that can be frustrating to control. I had a really hard time getting the yellow Pikmin to pick up and throw bombs without blowing up my entire colony. Precision is almost non-existent here, which makes for a lot of wasted time in a game where time is a key factor. What frustrated me more than anything else was the camera. Olimar's movement is tied to the thumbstick, and the Pikmin's movement is tied to the C-stick, leaving button controls for the camera, which is unsurprisingly awful. The views are restricted, making it difficult to ever really feel comfortable while playing. None of these things ruined my experience, but there was definitely a lot of room for improvement. I imagine a lot of these issues were addressed in later titles, but some problems are just the cost of playing on console. Maybe one of the most endearing things about Pikmin is that even if the player doesn't fix the ship within the 30 days, there is still a sense of finishing the game. In a lot of titles, failure typically leads to a loss of progress that needs to be redone, but in Pikmin, that isn't really the case. Nothing important on the level resets due to a fail state, and the only thing that's lost is time. In the end, players either collect every piece before the time limit is up, or they don't. And whether they fail or succeed, the story of Captain Olimar is wrapped up. If Olimar hasn't collected enough ship parts, the launch will fail, and and he ends up being transformed into a sort of half Pikmin, half human thing. If enough parts are collected though, the launch is a success and Captain Olimar heads back home. On my first playthrough, I just barely collected every piece, getting the last part on the final day. Regardless, what I admire so much about the multiple endings, especially the bad ending, is that the player isn't forced to succeed. So many games have fail states that never impact the story and can typically be ignored once the game is beaten. But in Pikmin, that doesn't happen. Failure leads to a failed ending, and that's okay. This approach doesn't work in every type of game, but it's refreshing to see titles that don't force players to do the same portion over and over until they figure it out. There is still progress and failure, which is cool. Pikmin surprised me. In a lot of ways, it did end up being exactly what I expected, but there's a layer of charm and intrigue in it that gripped me in a way I didn't see coming. I think this is why Pikmin has such a loyal following, despite not being an incredibly well-selling franchise. It's only when players get a close look at it that they realize how much it has to offer. I'm excited to play Pikmin 2 and 3 to see what they improved on, and to revisit a relaxing, yet terrifying world.